Hello everyone, we are going to once again be talking about America because the riots literally cannot stop. And once again we are going to be talking about media bias but we're going to be focusing in on two particular people and events that have happened over the past week within the riots. And though I know that many viewers watching will already know about the left-wing bias in media and make excuses for left-wing violence etc, I do think it's still worth going through this because precisely what they do should be of interest and we should know how to counteract it. And the only way we know how to counteract it is by finding out what they do. And I should also point out this video comes directly after the last one I did, link in the description as usual. And I really don't want to have to put the violence in this video again because my last video got demonetized because of it. Which is why I suggest you watch the last video. But anyway, we should get into this now. So after Carl Rittenhouse defended himself from three separate criminals in the Antifa mob, two of which were paedophiles, Tucker Carlson made this very cogent point. So are we really surprised that looting and arson accelerated to murder? How shocked are we that 17-year-olds with rifles decided they had to maintain order when no one else would? To anyone with half a brain, they will realise that Tucker Carlson here is saying that Carl Rittenhouse felt he had to take up arms and be some sort of vigilante defender of property because the police weren't doing their job. This is more a criticism of the police and of the state governors than it is of praising Carl Rittenhouse for doing what he did. To make it clear, Tucker Carlson's point is not to defend Carl Rittenhouse, it is to criticise the Democrats and their policies that have stopped the police doing their job. But naturally, people don't have a brain, and they especially don't have a brain over at The Guardian. As they say, Tucker Carlson defends actions of teen charged in killings of Kenosha protesters. Carl Rittenhouse, 17, has been charged with murder after two people were killed at Black Lives Matter protest. So The Guardian seems to have completely missed his point and are completely covering the asses of the rioters who were attacking Carl Rittenhouse. So let's see what they specifically have to say. The right-wing Fox News host Tucker Carlson has defended the actions of a 17-year-old who was arrested and charged with murder after two people were killed in Kenoshka, Wisconsin as white vigilante agitators shot at Black Lives Matter protest. I'm, I'm sorry, I... what? I mean, this is just classic Guardian. I mean, all right, at least they didn't call Tucker Carlson far right wing. But again, they're just covering the arses. Oh, they shot at Black Lives Matter protesters. That's not what they did. Cal Rittenhouse, as seen as in my previous video and all over the internet, was chased, attacked, and acted purely in self-defense. I guarantee those murder charges will be dropped. But carrying on, Cal Rittenhouse from Antioch, Illinois, 20 miles southwest of Kenoshka, has taken to the streets of Kenoshka with a rifle after protesters marched demanding justice for Jacob Blake, a young black father, who was shot and gravely wounded by police on Sunday. Once again, it's every black guy who was blatantly a criminal, blatantly going for weapons in a car. Now nah, they're the goodies. A white guy shot someone? Hmm, no, no nuance here. There's no nuance in either case, despite the fact that Jacob Blake was going in his car for a weapon, and it's clearly shown. And Carl Rittenhouse was clearly being attacked by the mob. That context was completely gone. Guardian has to get rid of it all because they need to show that Carl Rittenhouse was a white supremacist who was going there to shoot Black Lives Matter activists and Jacob Blake was a dindu. How the Guardian can blatantly lie like this and expect to carry on getting any money from the public at all is beyond me. And this isn't even just for the Guardian, but we'll get into that later. For now, back to the Guardian. On his TV show Carlson, who has a long record of making racist and inflammatory statements, triggering an advertising boycott, said that Rittenhouse's actions were understandable given the violence and property damage in the city. Now, again, <laughs> if there's such a long record of this, why would you not link it, Guardian? You link other things like Wisconsin and Jacob Blake, but not this long record of making racist and inflammatory statements. Kanoska has devolved into anarchy because the authorities in charge of the city abandoned it. People in charge from the governor of Wisconsin on down refused to enforce the law. That's all true. They stood back and watched Kanoska burn, Carlson said. He then added, So are we really surprised that looting and arson accelerated to murder? How shocked are we that a 17 year old with rifles decided they had to maintain order when no one else would? Hopefully the Guardian will answer that question for us. According to The Guardian, his words were met with instant condemnation on social media. I'm going to skip all that because I really don't care 
what social media had to say about this. It's Tucker Carlson. Everyone has an issue on social media with what he says because he speaks truth. But the rest of that article is literally just The Guardian pointing out that one of his writers was fired because he was anonymous in an online forum saying quote-unquote racist and sexist things. But also that Carlson has pointed out truths such as low-income people immigrating to America makes their own countries poorer and dirtier. Again, just pointing out truths. But you may read at your own leisure, link in the description as usual. But this isn't the end of The Guardian's escapades when it comes to Carl Rittenhouse. Quickly mentioned in the last video, this article came up. Vigilante volunteer terrorist, how the US media covers Carl Rittenhouse. The team has been charged with shooting and killing two protesters at Konoshka, again just ignoring the fact they attacked him, but it hasn't stopped some pundits from trying to humanise him. And as I said last video, this article implies that he shouldn't be humanised despite the fact he's human. So let's see how Poppy Noor wants to cover the American media's coverage of Kyle Rittenhouse. There is perhaps no greater example of the polarisation of American media than the coverage of Kyle Rittenhouse, the 17-year-old who allegedly shot and killed two protesters and injured another at Kenoshka this week. Again, not pointing out that that last one was armed with a pistol aimed at the kid's head. On one side of the divide, the Fox News host Tucker Carlson defended Rittenhouse on Wednesday due to the violence and property damage in Kenoshka. Again, no, that's not what he said. How shocked are we that a 17-year-old with rifles decided they had to maintain order when no one else would, asked Carlson. Yeah, what again, what he's saying there is that it should be the police's job to do that, not a 17-year-old's. Ridiculing Carlson's statement on Thursday, The Daily Show host Trevor Noah replied, No one drives to a city with guns because they love someone else's business so much. He continued, They do it because they are hoping to shoot someone. That's the only reason people like him join these gangs in the first place. Yes, I said it, a gang... Because this is not the Battle of Yorktown, it's a bunch of dudes threatening people with guns. Yes, well the idea of the gun is that it is there as a deterrent to stop rioters from going in businesses. Because there is no better deterrent than death. And guns are pretty good at killing people, as Kyle so heroically showed us. So Poppy then goes into how some American media covers Kyle Rittenhouse. Firstly, a volunteer. On Thursday, the tabloid... The New York Post described how Rittenhouse was spotted cleaning up graffiti in Kenosha hours before his arrest. The article displays a photograph of Rittenhouse scrubbing walls in Wisconsin with other high schoolers volunteering next to the Kenosha County Courthouse. Oh, so he didn't go there just to shoot people, as Trevor Noah said. But that's the only thing it says about him being a volunteer, that one article in the New York Post happened to mention it. I'm sure it was mentioned elsewhere. But this is The Guardian, I don't expect top-notch quality journalism. So next, Poppy explains how he's a vigilante. How quickly someone should be labelled a terrorist is a topic of huge debate. But one thing is that Muslim extremists are rarely, if ever called in the US media, a vigilante. <laughs> well, that's probably because they don't usually act as vigilantes. But many outlets, including The Guardian, have referred to Rittenhouse as a vigilante, a word usually used to describe an unauthorised person who takes it upon themselves to protect their community in the absence of the legal authorities doing so. Well, my lord, it's like the legal authorities weren't doing their job. Rittenhouse, who was spotted in a front row of a Trump rally, has been described in The Intercept as a conservative vigilante. Well, <laughs> it's, it's funny that, isn't it? It's like, if you're a vigilante in these riots, you're probably seen as the good guy trying to save America, and if you're not conservative, you're probably liberal in America, and you're the one rioting. Wow, it's really not looking good for the Dems, is it? In a piece profiling Anthony Huber, one of the protesters allegedly killed by Rittenhouse, the New York Post calls Rittenhouse a gun-toting vigilante. Oh, so the New York Post called him both. Like, I thought you were supposed to go on about bias here. I mean, I don't actually mind him being called a vigilante. That is essentially what he was doing. But I think it's completely justified in this case. Not that I'm generally for vigilanteism. I am generally for a centralised police force that is there to enforce justified laws. Next, Poppy goes into how he was an avid supporter of the police. The tools used to radicalise terrorists such as social media, propaganda and trainings frequently come under scrutiny following an extremist or violent attack. In Rittenhouse's case, much of the press, including The Guardian, have described him as being an avid supporter of the police, who was interested in law enforcement. One Washington Post article points to Rittenhouse's upbringing in a Chicago suburb, 
shadowing law enforcement and filled his social media with Blue Lives Matter posts and how he was once a police cadet who intended to join the Marine Corps. But good lad. Um, but I don't see how this shows bias. I mean, it, as you point out, The Guardian has actually apparently written something that's objective truth, and I'm impressed. Well done. It, it's rare that I see that. Next is maintaining peace. It's hard to find an article referencing Rittenhouse's alleged actions on the right-wing news outlets Fox News. Coverage of the shooting was given equal coverage on its website to the protester who set fire to a police precinct and a piece mocking CNN coverage of the unrest in Kenosha. But one of the few pieces on Fox's front page about Rittenhouse is embedded with an interview between Tucker Carlson and Daily Caller journalist who interviewed Rittenhouse before the alleged shootings took place. In the video, the journalist refers to how Rittenhouse was trying to maintain peace in the absence of police, protecting a business that had been burned and how he was allegedly chased and shouted at during the protest. I... <laughs> <laughs> Last video I did has the video where he was not only chased and shouted at, shit was thrown at him, he had a gun pointed at his bloody head and he was attacked with a skateboard which can give you brain damage. But of everything, that is what The Guardian decides to put as alleged. You know, they'll say, oh, he's charged with murder. It was murder. Oh, he was allegedly attacked, by the way. It, it, it put that right at the bottom of an article. Yeah, he was allegedly attacked. This is allegedly self-defense. Oh, but he's a murderer. He's being counted for murder. God, I hate this bloody newspaper. Finally, we find out how Rittenhouse is described as a terrorist. Domestic terrorism is defined by the FBI as the unlawful use or threatened use of violence by a group or individual based and operating entirely within the US without foreign direction committed against persons or property to intimidate or coerce a government, the civilian population or any segment thereof in furtherance of political or social objectives. And that would be my case for making and for a domestic terrorist group. However, this is what... I can't read that name. I say this as a name like Harry and Gladiv. Ian Presley, a 17-year-old white supremacist domestic terrorist, drove across state lines armed with an AR-15. He did drive across state lines, but he didn't drive across it with the AR-15. The AR-15 was his, was his mate in Wisconsin. He shot and killed two people who had assembled to affirm the value, dignity and worth of black lives. No, two of them were paedophiles. One of them pointed a gun at his head. The other was attacking him with a skateboard. And the other was saying, shoot me N-word and then chased him after throwing a bag full of god knows what at him. Fix your damn headlines. Publications have tended not to call Rittenhouse a terrorist. Esquire did uh, Esquire did call his alleged attack an act of what could only be called terrorist tourism. Wow. But on Wednesday, Representative Ayanna <laughs> Presley did. She described Rittenhouse as a domestic terrorist who drove... Well, we've read that. We get the idea. So as you can see from this article, Poppy Noor has absolutely no criticisms when it comes to any criticism coming to Rittenhouse, whether they're calling him a terrorist or whether they're using the word vigilante to try and try and imply that he's a bad man and he should have left it to the law, despite the fact the law were doing absolutely nothing. Anyway, that's another lesson as to why I hate The Guardian. But things were getting so crazy with the whole Carl Rittenhouse thing that even the Daily Mail, which is generally seen as a right-wing paper in the UK, was trying to get in on the action to have a dig at him. Shocking footage shows teen Kenosha gunman Cal Rittenhouse punching a girl several times in the head and stomach during argument, just weeks before he shot dead two BLM protesters and seriously injured a third. I, again, no mention of the fact that they were attacking him. Anyway, let's have a quick look at this shocking footage. I mean, this is the clip that the Daily Mail put out, and honestly, it just looks like a pretty standard schoolyard fight. I don't know about you, but I know a lot of kids that act like that. I, I need a lot more context than that. Let, let's see what Twitter have for us. Oh, oh what? Oh, he! Oh, no, 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 no! He punching a bitch. He punching a bitch. I mean, I appreciate it's not easy to tell what's going on there, but from the sound of the commentary, it does sound like the girls were starting the fight. But even if they weren't, I, I don't see this as something that should be all over the news. 
school fights happen all the time. Kids are idiots. But it's just another way they're trying to paint Carl Rittenhouse as this awful criminal who will probably have a future as some sort of violent career criminal, and I just don't buy it. But when we get to the point that even the right-wing quote-unquote Daily Mail is even trying to have a go at Rittenhouse, this is public enemy number one, despite the fact that he pretty much did nothing wrong, and I'm pretty sure the courts are going to agree with that. So next, we will move on to the story of Michael Forrest Rhino. For reference, again referencing last video, this was the man who randomly shot that Trump supporter in what appeared to be cold blood. And a day or two after, Vice had an interview with him. Man linked to killing at Portland protest says he acted in self-defence. I could have sat there and watched them kill a friend of mine of colour, but I wasn't going to do that. Again, I'm not going to play the video again, but I, I just call bullshit. I didn't see any evidence of that in the video. And there certainly isn't as much evidence as there is of Kyle Rittenhouse defending himself. So, the Vice article starts, Ever since a member of the right-wing Patriot Prayer Group was shot and killed during a violent rally in downtown Portland, August 29, the police investigation has reportedly focused on a 48-year-old Michael Forrest Reinold, a army veteran and father of two who has provided what he called security at Black Lives Matter protests. The Wall Street Journal reported earlier that Reinold was a person of interest in the killing of Aaron J. Danielson, who was taking part in a massive pro-Trump caravan that began in Clackamas earlier that day. In a conversation with freelance journalist Donovan Farley shared with Vice News, Reinold said he believed he and his friend were about to be stabbed and that he acted in self-defence. Vice News has not independently verified details of his story, and it appears that no other outlet has either. But Tucker Carlson did try and get the other side of this story. Your friend was assassinated again. We don't need to debate that. It's on video. And now you are somehow the villain and he is somehow the villain in the story. What are they saying? I don't pay attention to everything that they're saying. Uh, I know that they came up behind us. They shot my friend and killed him. Now, it's funny how we have two conflicting stories, but we have video evidence that seems to support one rather than the other. So it sounds like this Michael is really talking garbage to Vice News and trying to cover his ass. But we'll go back quickly to the Vice article. You know, lots of lawyers suggested that I shouldn't even be saying anything, but I feel it's important that the world at least gets a little bit of what's really going on, Reinald said. I had no choice. I mean, I had a choice. I could have sat there and watched them kill a friend of mine of colour, but I wasn't going to do that. Portland has been a flashpoint for the protests since the 2016 election, but after the death of George Floyd in May, protests have gotten messier and increasingly dangerous. In August, a right-wing protester was arrested for firing into a crowd of Black Lives Matter protesters. Proud, proud boy Alan Swinney brandished a gun and pointed it at protesters, and a group of reportedly left-aligned protesters were seen on video dragging a truck driver out of his vehicle and beating him up. This is surprisingly you know, unbiased reporting, it seems, from Vice. Though I will say, compared to the entirety of these writers being Black Lives Matter supporters and Antifa supporters, I will admit they are omitting quite a lot there. The killing of Danielson is the first link to an anti-fascist protester in recent years. It happened one week after 17-year-old pro-Trump protester Kyle Rittenhouse allegedly shot three protesters at a march in Kenosha, Wisconsin, killing two. Rittenhouse's lawyer is claiming he acted in self-defence. I, I notice they are not saying that Michael's lawyers are claiming he acted in self-defence. So let's quickly go through Reinald's account of the situation. So Reinald stressed that people participating in the pro-Trump caravan were heavily armed in those trucks, and they carried not just paintball guns as reported in the press. Yes, I believe the press also said they were carrying mace, uh, possibly real guns too. I'm not entirely sure. He found himself in confrontation with a man who he says threatened him and another protester with a knife. Had I stepped forward, he would have maced or stabbed me, Reynolds said. Okay, that's... I mean, again, in the video, there's no evidence of that. Did that happen or not? I, there's no evidence to say it did, but there's nothing really to say it didn't either. But I don't trust this man's word. Bystander video from multiple angles show a man who resembles Reynolds and appears to have the same neck tattoo firing two shots at Danielson and then walk away. I was confident that I did not hit anyone innocent and, uh, as I made my exit, he said. I, I mean, again, his whole thing seems to be, I think I was going to get stabbed if I went towards him. And he's also alleging that he was threatened, but again, I, I, there's nothing on the video to say that. 
That doesn't necessarily mean it didn't happen, but we're going to need a hell of a lot better evidence than this because that video, and as the guy's account on Tucker Carlson said, they were backwards. Uh, they were behind them when they got shot. And for those that have seen the video, it's actually quite hard to tell which way he was facing. But from what I've seen, it just looks like a killing in cold blood. But Vice are completely uncritically showing and reporting on this guy's account. But that's enough of that article. If you want to read any more of it, again, link in description. So I want to remind you that last week, Carl Rittenhouse, as soon as he shot these people, he went straight to the police, arms in the air, posed no threat to them, and admitted straight up to them that he shot three people, probably killing two of them. So how did Michael Reinald react to the police coming to arrest him? Uh, he got shot. Suspecting fatal Portland shooting is killed by officers during arrest. Law enforcement agents killed Michael Forrest Reinald while trying to arrest him, four officials said. He was being investigated in the fatal shooting of a supporter of a far-right group. Again, I don't think Patriot Prayer are actually far-right. I think they're just conservative Trump supporters, but, I mean, to be fair, anything right of Mao is far right. So, Lacey Washington, law enforcement agent, shot and killed an Antifa supporter on Thursday as they moved to arrest him in the fatal shooting of a right-wing activist who was part of a pro-Trump caravan in Portland, Oregon, officials said. Oh, so, <laughs> amazingly, this guy crossed state lines with a gun. Does anyone care on the left wing? No. The suspect, Michael Forrest Reinald, 48, was shot by officers from a federally-led fugitive task force during the encounter in Lacey, Washington, southwest of Seattle, according to four law enforcement officials familiar with the investigation. So, according to the New York Times, Lieutenant Ray Brady of the Thurston County Sheriff's Office said in an interview that the suspect, being sought by the law enforcement team, had exited an apartment and got into a vehicle. As they attempted to apprehend him, there was gunfire, Lieutenant Brady said. He said four law enforcement officers fired their weapon. Uh, from the sounds of it, it sounds like the suspect, a.k.a. Reinald, fired first, but it's not entirely clear from that one sentence. Lieutenant Brady said the officers at the scene reported that the suspect was armed, but that investigators had not confirmed that as of early Friday morning, shortly before this article was published. An arrest warrant had been issued by the Portland Police earlier Thursday, on the same day that Vice News published an interview with Mr. Reinald, in which he appeared to admit on the August 29 shooting, saying that he had no choice. So assuming that's true, that he was armed and he did fire first, completely justified shooting, as usual with the police and with my opinion, do try and comply with them when it is generally justified. You'll find yourself not being arrested, not going from a misdemeanor to a felony because you started resisting arrest and ultimately as louis levi says they tend to be good men just trying to do their job obviously there's some rogue cops who aren't but they seem to be getting incredibly rare especially since they all have body cam of course popular online left-wing pundits had a lot to say about this such as hassan piker's one line is this a revenge killing wtf and vouch shortly after saying what do you want to bet their body cams ran out of batteries? Of course, Vorsch's opinion is that Michael Reinald should have instantly given in to the mob of police coming upon him. He would think that Michael's shooting back was a sign of aggression, and that he of course should have submitted to the mob. God knows what Hassan Piker thinks, but if he also thinks Rittenhouse didn't act in self-defence, then I don't know what to do about these communists, although I would be happy if it involved a helicopter and an ocean. That's a joke, YouTube. That is a joke. But unfortunately, the Oregon newspaper, presumably of Oregon, had this to say. Witnesses told the Olympian newspaper that they saw two SUVs pull up and then heard 30 to 50 shots. Two people said they saw Reinald begin to fire when he got out of the car, they said officers returned fire. So regardless, Vosh, as if body cams ran out of batteries, which I don't think they did, you still have two witnesses to testify that the police were shot at first. And given they are after a suspect who shot someone in cold blood, if you ask me, that's pretty good restraint anyway, from the police, I mean. So it again seems that the media are trying to paint a right-wing shooter as a terrible person and a left-wing one as a vigilante who is doing good for the community by getting rid of far-right wingers. But the truth could not uphold this story for long. 
because every time it seems to be the case. As far as I can tell, Antifa have absolutely no good qualities on their side. Kyle Rittenhouse shoots three people, two of them turn out to be paedophiles. Reinhold says that he's shot in self-defence, as soon as the police come he shoots at them. So I'm not entirely convinced by his story to be honest. And we keep hearing from everywhere that ooh, right wing terrorism's on the rise, ooh it's the right wing you need to be scared of, they're gonna come and shoot all the minorities. I'm sorry but I'm just gonna let a completely unrelated video play for the next couple of minutes, do enjoy. I, I, I just don't even know why there aren't uprisings all over the country, and maybe there will be. People need to start taking to the streets. This is a dictator. You know, there needs to be unrest in the streets for as long as there is unrest in our lives. Enemies of the state. Show me where it says that protests are supposed to be polite and peaceful. Do something about your dad's immigration practices, you feckless. When they go low, we kick them. How do you resist the temptation to run up and wring her neck? Biggest terror threat in this country is white men, most of them radicalized right up to the right. I thought he should have punched him in the face. I said, even if you lost, he insulted your wife. Yes. He came down the escalator and called Mexicans rapists and murders. He said, well, what do you think I should have done? I said, I think you should have punched him in the face and then gotten out of the race. You would have been a hero. I'd like to punch him in the face. I said, if we were in high school, I'd take you behind the gym and beat the hell out of him. Punch some people in the face. When was the last time an actor assassinated a president? They're still going to have to go out and put a bullet in Donald Trump, and that's a fact. Look as his character is stabbed to death. Where is John Wilkes Booth when you need him? I have thought an awful lot about blowing up the White House. A Missouri state senator is under investigation by the Secret Service after saying she hopes President Trump is assassinated. I will go and take Trump out tonight. And if you see anybody from that cabinet in a restaurant, in a department store, at a gasoline station, you get out and you create a crowd. And you push back on them. And you tell them they're not welcome anymore, anywhere. And sadly, the domestic enemies to our voting system and wow. our honoring our Constitution are, are right at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. They're not going to stop before Election Day in November, and they're not going to stop after Election Day. And that should be, everyone should take note of that on both levels, that this isn't, they're not going to let up, and they should not. If you think we're rallying now, you ain't seen nothing yet. Oh, I can't let that last bit play, that'll demonetize me. But hopefully you got the point of the unrelated video. It appears that uh, the ones really going after and trying to stir up all this trouble are the leftists. It is my personal opinion that it is leftists and left-wing activists and left-wingers in power who are goading these riots on. I think a random right-wing Trump supporter was killed in cold blood because of all these people goading it on, saying Trump is a dictator, he's worse than Hitler, these Trump supporters want you dead. Like, of course it's going to make someone who can't see the light of day, so to speak, want to go out and kill them. And then use ad hoc bullshit arguments to try and claim that he was acting in self-defence. That appears to be exactly what Michael Reinhold did. And I find absolutely no excuse for it. It has to stop now. I am just for having no violence at all in society. We're supposed to be civilised countries. Anyway, that's all I had for you today. So as usual, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, goodbye.